Hello, welcome to AutoCAD for Mac, Autodesk's long-awaited return to uh, the Apple computer. Today I wanted to show you a little bit about the user interface since everyone out there is going to be a new user of this product. Um, the first big change is we're just getting used to the ribbon in Windows, um, but now that they've gone back to a Mac OS, uh, we have a new interface, a new graphical interface, and that's referred to as uh, tool sets or the tool set palette. So on the left side of your screen, you'll see the tool set palette. Okay, and up at the top you have switching uh, between your different tool sets. Right now, out of the box, all we have is drafting, annotation, and modeling. So if I cycle through these, look at annotation, I'll see a different group of tools in my tool set palette. Okay. Each one of these uh, little collections of tools is referred to as a tool group. And individual tool groups um, often can expand out to show more tools. Okay, And once you move away from that tool group, uh, it will automatically collapse unless I expand it and choose the lock symbol, in which case it'll stay locked open until I choose otherwise. If you want to do any 3D modeling, then the modeling tool set is what you're going to want to use. You'll see it changes to a collection of tools for solid modeling, uh, meshes, surfaces. Uh, for 2D drafting and annotation, you'll want to use the drafting or annotation tool sets. Individual tools also have flyouts in some cases. For example, if I choose the circle tool, it has a flyout, and if I hold and click, I'll get different options for creating my circle, like a tangent, tangent, tangent circle. The next major change is the command line. You may be used to a command line that goes across the whole bottom of your screen. Um, in AutoCAD for Mac, we've got a command line that's sort of minimal on the bottom left side of our screen. Uh, it only displays by default one line of text. But if I enter a command, like VS for visual styles, I'll see that it expands a little bit. I get two lines of text to show uh, what I need to see in the command line. Alternatively, if I want to see more than one line of text, I can use this little expansion arrow next to the command line. And that will open up my command line so that I can see uh, recent commands. I've also got uh, some new features, not really new features, new location for features in the top left of my screen. Uh, if I want to look at my viewports, um, I can click on this little plus in the top left corner of my drawing. And I can set a different viewport configuration, such as uh, two horizontal viewports. Okay. You may be familiar with this if you're a user of uh, AutoCAD in the Windows environment. Um, I can navigate uh, differently in two different viewports. Okay. We're used to those controls being accessible through the ribbon. But in AutoCAD for Mac, they're accessed through this, uh, this plus right here. I'm going to go ahead and switch that back to a single viewport. Um, you also see this nav cube up here. So you can use this to navigate in three dimensions, look at isometrics, different elevation views. Um, it's really useful if you're drafting in 3D, not so much in two dimensions. Um, you can also access all these tools through this top um, drop down in the top left corner. So if I click here, I get all my different predefined views. If I save my own views, um, they'll show up here under model views. You can also change between parallel and perspective, uh, which are settings for three-dimensional viewing. And then finally, I've also got my uh, access to my visual styles here in the top left corner. So I can choose a different visual style for 3D drafting. Most of your commands that you remember from AutoCAD for Windows are still accessible in the command line. Um, and although you set different tool sets, um, you always have all of your tools accessible through the command line. Okay. You'll also notice that I have my uh, cursor coordinates in the bottom right corner of my drawing. And those are uh, accessible. Turning those on and off is accessible through the options, which I'll talk about in another video. 
on the right side of our screen, uh, we have some palettes, such as our Properties palette and our Layers palette. Uh, those can be moved by clicking and dragging and dropping. And I can also um, turn off different palettes through the Windows uh, drop-down menu. So if I wanted to uh, turn off my Layers palette, I could do it right here. Wanted to turn on my reference manager. You want to do all that through your Windows menu bar drop down. Which brings me to the point. This is referred to now as the menu bar. Uh, so our all of our drop down menus are referred to as the menu bar. We can't turn it on and off. It's always on, um, although it is customizable, which I'll talk about in a future video. We also have our status bar on the bottom right of our screen contains some drawing tools, drawing aids such as O snaps and polar tracking. Um, just a little farther to the right I have some viewing tools, pan, zoom, and view cube. Although you can do most of these uh, most of these navigation operations with your mouse now or your trackpad, magic mouse, um, AutoCAD for Mac supports multi-touch gestures I've also got all my annotation controls even farther to the right. Uh, I can set my annotation scale and turn off visibility um, and automatically add scales. And finally, uh, you won't notice that you don't have model and uh, layout tabs. So that's now accessed through the layout list, which is here on the bottom of your screen. If I click on this, I can choose to go to my layout. Can create new layouts here as well. So this is it for the in user interface, a basic overview of the user interface for AutoCAD for Mac. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please let us know. And uh, look at our other video for uh, some advanced customization of AutoCAD for Mac. Thank you.